And as you can see by Darth Vader being behind me, that this is usually when I am talking about something serious with you guys. Morning, internet friends. How are we doing today? How are we sassy? Yeah, I'm doing comfy. How are we, boys? Say, we're excited because we got a brand new toy. So, come here, boys. Can we look at the rope toy? Because it's pretty awesome looking. Come here. Can I look at it? Ugh, I'll give it right back. Thanks. See, that's what it looks like. It's made out of felt. Kind of makes me think of like those felt blankets that you can buy at the craft store. And it becomes a really cool rope. So, my awesome friend at Slice of Lime actually sent that to me as an early birthday present. So, thank you. And of course, how do I have Slice of Lime on a bracelet? Because Chronic Lime is. Is real. If I can get to the real, there it is. Chronic Lime is real. Yay! So, on her channel for Lyme Disease Awareness, she. Well, one, if, you subs if you're a new subscriber to her, or if you haven't subscribed yet, do it. Because for Lyme Disease Awareness, for every five subscribers, she or her husband Chad have to take a pie to the face. And I mean, they're already up to three pies, so clearly we want to see them get hit with a lot of pies. I think that'd be a great time. Um, they also have, you could order bracelets for like $4, or order a t-shirt for $18. You'd have to email them, and I think they have a link in their description on their videos. Um, they also have the Sammy the Spirakeet Spy Game, and Babette the Babija. And if you find one of them first, you win a bracelet. And that's how I got this one. So, if you want to support Lyme Disease Awareness, go follow Slice of Lime. And do the Kill Lime Pie Challenge. And all sorts of fun things. So, just wanted to let you guys know that she is awesome. And yeah. So, now the boys are going to continue playing with their new toy. And I'm going to work on my vlog. And I'll check back in with you guys later. Hey guys. So... I haven't really updated you on the day today, and as you can see by Darth Vader being behind me, that this is usually when I am talking about something serious with you guys, and that I know will take a really long time to explain, and I don't want to hold the camera up for that long. So, first, Emerald's on the floor. There's his paw. <laughs> he didn't like that. Sassy is, can you see? There's her toesies. There's her little toesies. And then Emer Pff, Emerald, Riddler's downstairs somewhere. So, what has the day been? Uh, really not much of anything. It's been being lazy. But I did get some things accomplished, like I got my transcript. I made a B in biological statistics. Woohoo! Yeah! So, yay! Hopefully that'll bring my GPA up. Yay! <laughs> um... What else? I got my transcript sent off to ABAC, and then from there they have to redo my graduation application, get my degree status or something, and then I get my diploma in the mail. What? So I will actually have a bachelor's degree, even though I've been saying I have one anyway, because I put all the work into it, so whatever. Um, I put in an application to Petco to be a grooming bather. Because I got an email saying, because I already did a general application through Indeed.com. And then I got an email today from PetSmart being like, hey, go online to our store and do the official application. So I was like, okay. So I did that. But I also got a phone call today from Blue Buffalo. They, I'm in the hiring process now. So I got a job. Hooray. It's part time. And I'd be working 8 to 12 hours a week, but hey, the pay is actually really good. And it's weekly instead of bi-weekly, so that's extremely helpful. So, 
It makes me just feel a lot better knowing that I finally have some kind of job. Where I don't... I mean, obviously I'm still looking for a full-time job. And I'm still going to be trying to work with the zoo because eventually I do want a position there as a keeper. We'll just see how that goes. Um, and what else did I do today? I made dinner. Made salsa chicken. That was yum. Did yoga. I need to work on strengthening my wrists because they're not very good at holding up my weight for long. And I read a fan fiction. It was a Haikyuu fan fiction and it made me feel all the feels. I read four out of six chapters and it was like, no, I have to stop. So, yeah. And took my meds. I also went to the grocery store today. It wasn't bad. Um, but now for the couple of serious things. Um, I had you guys at one point ask me, like, what anxiety topics you guys would want me to cover. And there were two questions that I got. Um... One of them, I can come up with an answer pretty quick. The other one's a little more complicated. So I'm going to go with the first one. The first one was, how does my anxiety react in serious situations? Weirdly enough, it's the calmest and most rational my anxiety ever is. Like, I have gone through tornado warning. Well, tornado warnings. Yeah. I've had to be in the bottom floor of my dorm room my freshman year. Like, the bottom floor of our building because of a tornado spotted. I've been through severe thunderstorms. Um, of course, I've told you about the prowler that was last night. There's like serious situations I've been in where my anxiety is perfectly calm. The number one thing I'm thinking of is getting everybody else safe. And to me, it makes me think, hey, I'm actually thinking like a normal person would in this kind of situation. I thought a bug just walked down my pants. It was the tag. Holy crap, that scared me a little bit. Um, but of course, in any other situation, my anxiety is completely irrational, which of course is what anxiety does, which sucks. But you know, what do you do? Um, the other question I got, which I'm having a hard time figuring an answer for, it was basically how to retrain your brain from things that have caused anxiety, like bad relationships or what other examples? You know, bad events, things like that. And of course, the first thought that came to me was, it sounds a lot like PTSD, where you're retraining your brain from the bad situation, but anxiety does that. And how I personally retrain my brain, it's a process. It is still a process. There are still things that have happened in my past that still affect me. Like, okay, I finally will discuss this with you guys that I said I would earlier. So with the relationship with my ex, um, one of the biggest things was since we hardly talked for four to five months because we went to school seven hours away from each other and he just stopped texting me much. It made me lose a lot of trust. And I felt anxiety around him constantly. And just feel like I couldn't trust him and that I'll be annoying. And now that I really understand my anxiety more, because at the time my anxiety was just starting and I really wasn't sure what was going on. So now that I know it better and I know what I don't like, it's like, in a way it's like, I'm afraid to go into a relationship again. I mean, I would love to be in a relationship. I think everybody wants to find someone that they love and, you know, get married and have a life. You know, whoever you love, you love, go for it. Unless you're 56 and liking a seven-year-old kid, don't do that. That's bad. Um, and of course, I'd love the idea of being in a relationship and being married to someone one day. That'd be awesome. But now my brain is thinking that they'll just completely ignore me again. That I will be rejected and they'll find me as annoying. And now that I have my anxiety, that they're going to see me as more of a burden than anything. And <laughs> just, I don't know. I don't want to feel like I was basically ignored and just left behind. Which is kind of how I felt my last relationship. 
I really just don't want to feel rejected again. I don't want to know. Um, because going a little deeper into my past, a little bit of deep time with Raven. Yay! Um, I was actually, I was bullied, obviously. Well, I don't know how obvious that is, <laughs> but I had a lot of times where people that I was very close to kind of rejected me and turned against me. Um, you guys have probably seen that in a couple, in some older vlogs, but that's happened my entire life. It's where I really cannot trust people. It is extremely hard for me to trust someone. And if I trust you, then you know that's a huge, huge deal. If I can't trust you, like say if I trusted you and then I lose that trust in you for whatever reason, you don't get it back. That is how I am. And at one point I had a discussion with my mom about how I generally just do not trust people. She's like, that's no way to live. Well, in a way, I'm like, you have to have some distrust in people. Because if you trusted everyone, you would probably, like, get murdered by a serial killer or something. But, um, I don't know. Since I've had people that I care about completely reject me. And, yeah. I can't trust anyone. Not very easy. It takes me a long time to be able to tr to be able to completely open up to people. And even though, even now, you guys will probably hate this, but as open as I seem to you guys, I won't tell you every single thing about me. One, the entire internet does not need to know everything about me. Though I'm fine with you guys knowing that I don't like pulp and orange juice, or some other weird stuff, or that of course I like Darth Vader. But I mean, that's life. Um, so, kind of, now to finally loop all this back to, hi, buddy, hi, what, did you hear someone at the door? No, he rejected my love. Mm. At least I know that you won't ever, like, actually reject me, not like people. Because doggos are wonderful. Thumbs up for dogs, because they're amazing. Um, but how to retrain my brain from that? That is a huge part of the re healing or recovery process. Do I think you can 100% recover from anxiety? No, I really don't think so. Because you have to have a little bit of anxiety in your life. It's healthy. It helps you get things done. It also helps you keep from getting attacked by a serial killer and murdered. Um, I mean, there are different ways people have been working to retrain their brains. Of course, I've done therapy. Um, and there are things that have helped with retraining my thoughts. My last therapist especially knew how much I didn't trust people. And so she was just over the moon excited the day I told her that I could trust her. I mean, that was true. I could trust her. And I would trust her. She was wonderful. Um, and of course, there's people who also use things like hypnotism and meditation and just talking to people. Um, so I don't have a clear, solid answer for how to retrain your brain. Huh, that was loud. Because, I mean... That's an ongoing process. So, basically the best thing I can say about it is find a thing, find something that will help you with getting, like being able to control the thoughts better and just find something that helps you. I know for me, things that have helped me have been medication, course therapy, and now my wonderful service dog and training, who you can't see right now because he's on the floor. My sweet little boy. Oh, an update on MRL. He is doing great recovering from surgery. He doesn't lick at his stitches very much. That's because I tell him no as soon as he does it. Yeah, bud. But... but just know that retraining your brain is not going to happen overnight. It's a process. It's something that takes time, 
You don't need to get upset if it isn't fast enough for you. You just find something that helps, find something that works, and that's what you go with. I'm sorry if that really wasn't the answer you wanted, but I really couldn't think of a good answer because I know my brain is definitely not completely retrained. And I don't think it ever will be, but who knows. But now I'm going to sign off for the night and head off to bed. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've had a wonderful day or night, rain or shine, whatever the world has for you today. Question of the day, thinking about this. Like, this is the toy that my friend at Slice of Lime gave my voice. It is made out of felt. And of course, I also have regular rope toys. And so the question of the day is, if you could make a dog toy out of any material in the world, what would it be and why? Um... I think if I could do it, I would make a chew toy out of, and let's just say per se that your dog cannot ingest this. Um, I would make a dog toy out of bubble wrap because it's crinkly, though it makes loud popping sounds. I think my dog would love messing with bubble wrap. So put your answers down below and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.